In this video, we're going to create an animation of a man walking through a city. When I run the animation, the man will move from the left-hand side of the screen to the right. I'll start the animation by clicking the play button toward the bottom of the screen. You can see the man moves very quickly and jumps, and then moves a little bit more slowly. The speed difference is because I've animated the man in a different way. You can see at the bottom of the screen I have two layers in my animation. The city layer, which is in the background, and the man layer, which is the foreground, that's the top layer. So to create this scene, we're going to work through a few very simple steps. Open up Adobe Animate, and then go to File, New. When you see the new document window, you can set the size of your canvas or the stage that you're going to be using and the frame rate. So right now I have 24 animation frames per second in my animation. So I'm just going to choose the low setting, which is the 640 by 480 pixel size window. And I'll leave the frame rate at 24 frames per second. So I'll just leave everything as it is currently and just click Create. Now we're looking at our project window. You can see a list of tools in the far left hand side. These are going to be used for drawing. At the bottom you can see the timeline and the number of layers in our project. Right now I only have one layer which is just this white canvas. And on the far right hand side, we've got some other options which we'll be using later. So for example, if I pick on the paintbrush tool in the left hand um, side of the window, I can switch between the different properties for that tool by clicking on the tool tab in the right hand side menu and choosing a different fill color for the paintbrush. And the tools that you can select are going to be different depending on the, uh, the options that you choose from the, the list on the left hand side. Anyway, let's um, start to create something in this first layer. So in layer one, I'm going to draw a city for my character to walk through. To do this, I'm going to click on the rectangle tool. And if you don't see it because there's a different shape, simply click and hold. And then you can scroll through the different options. And the top one is the rectangle tool. Now on the right hand side, make sure you've clicked the tool tab and change the fill color and the stroke color to matching colors. So I'm going to use the same shade of gray. And now I'm going to draw some rectangles that represent the buildings in my um, stage. So draw a gray rectangle. It doesn't matter if it goes off the canvas. Um, that's completely fine. And I'm going to leave some space between my, my buildings because I'm going to fill in these gaps with other sized buildings. So here we go, I've got some buildings in my city and now I'm going to change the fill color to something lighter and the stroke color and I'm going to draw some other buildings in the foreground. And you can see that when I'm drawing these buildings there's kind of a snapping function where the buildings, the rectangles will line up but in the top um, right hand side the corner of this building I'm drawing now you can see a little bit that sticks out which you obviously won't want so if you just keep moving a bit that snapping function will um, disable itself and you'll get proper sized rectangles without that little kind of blip in the corner so let me just finish drawing my city I could you know add some other yellow rectangles and draw windows but right now this, this is enough and um, the bit that is off the canvas you won't see as part of the animation. So if you've got bits that are off the canvas, that's completely fine. Okay, so now I have um, finished drawing my city. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the timeline and you can see I've got five, 10, 15, 20. These are the animation frames. So if I click on the 24th animation frame, that will be a second of my animation. I'm going to make this a two second animation. Um, and we can just have this looping over and over. Um, so I'm going to click on frame 48, and that is two seconds here. And I will right click on this frame and go to insert frame. And now we've got this large gray um, 
timeline block that's just appeared. And this is because we have 20, uh, 48 frames now of, of animation. So if I click on the first one, I see my city. If I click on the second frame, I see the same city. So the same um, contents are in each frame of animation. If I run this now, even though nothing's moving, it's still playing through the animation as you see the, uh, the blue timeline marker moving through the, the frames. So right now I'm going to click in the far left hand side there is a, a square with a plus button on it and I'm going to create a new layer. So I'm going to click that. You do the same. And now I have layer 2. Now right now I'm in the final layer of my animation so I'm going to click on the first layer here and I'm going to draw a character, I'm going to draw a stick man. So to do that I'm going to click on the um, rectangle tool and I'm going to select the oval tool from the list so you can do the same. And obviously I don't want the man to be grey because he will, uh, won't be visible from the building so I'll change the fill colour so I'll use this, this dark blue here I'll change the stroke color. You could turn the stroke color off if you want, so there's no stroke color at all. That's the um, white square with the red line through it in the top right-hand side of this box. So I'll turn off the stroke color completely so there's no stroke color. And I'll draw um, the man's head. So I'll just draw a circle. There we go. Um, and now I'm going to use the line tool and I'll just draw the stick man's body. So obviously I need the stroke color here. So I'm gonna change the stroke color to that shame, uh, that's same shade of, of blue and give the stick man a body so I'll give him some legs here we go and if you make a mistake so if I <laughs> give him one really large leg here and you go, oh that's wrong just hit command Z to undo and it will you know take you a step backwards so that's command Z or edit and undo um, so I'll continue to draw the stick man and I'll give him some arms, there we go, make him look like he's going for a jog. There we go, okay, so uh, simple stick man. And now, if I click on that first frame of animation, that's where the man is, but if I click on the second one, you can see that the, um, the man is always here, right? It's always here. So if I um, now click on the second frame of animation and click on my selection tool, I can click and drag the man and I can move him. And then I click on the third frame of animation and I can click and move him again. The only problem is I can't see where the, um, the man was previously. So we'll turn something called onion skinning on. If you look just above the timeline, there's two overlapping circles. If I click that, you can see that all the previous copies of the man are visible. And just in the top of the timeline, you can see where the onion skinning, so I kind of like the layers, they call it onion skinning because there's layers of an onion. Uh, where you can see the onion skinning is set, uh, it's only for about five frames of animation. So I can click, hold onion skinning and select all frames. There we go. And now the, all, uh, the onion skinning is uh, set to all frames. So now in frame three, I can click on frame four, move the man, frame five, move the man, there we go, um, and you can see all the previous places that he was before. Frame six, I can make him do like a little jump, so I can just start to move him, frame seven, move him again, frame eight, start to bring him down, frame nine, there we go, frame 10, he's back on the ground. Uh, and if I run through this animation now, if I click the play button, you can see that, um, it moves through those 10 frames of animation and then it just stops because I haven't animated the man any further. But obviously I don't have to move him manually every single time like this because moving him in small increments is very time consuming. So what I can do instead is if I click on the last frame and I move the man all the way to the end of the scene. There we go. So there, that black dot there now in that last frame. So if I go to frame 10, there he is. If I go to frame 26 he's still in the same place he was because I haven't moved him and then in frame 48 the end of two seconds he's at the end so if I click in the middle of this timeline now where um, you see frame 10 and frame 48 if I click in the middle and then right click and go to create classic tween 
This creates automatic animations. There's different options and we won't go into the other options today, but if you just click classic tween, it will give you a message. It will say, uh, this frame can't be tweened. You need to convert it to a symbol. Ignore the message. Just simply click OK. And you can see now we've got this purple line on our timeline and all of these um, kind of blurred shapes because the onion skinning is showing where the man's going to move. So if I click on the plus button now, uh, sorry, the play button, not plus button, the play button and run through the animation and then click play again, you can see it's running through my individual frames does the jump and then it uses that tween to move things automatically. Now I want to get rid of these these onion skin um, men that we can see through. So I'm just going to click on onion skinning and just click it once, this um, two overlapping circles, click that once to turn the onion skinning off. And now I can just click play and I have my finished animation and I have the man walking through the city. I'm going to add one last effect that I didn't include in the example I showed at the start of this video. I'm going to have a sun move through the, uh, the sky. So to do that, I'm going to click on the plus button again to add a new layer. And I'm going to click back on the first frame of animation in layer three. Um, and then I'm going to click on the circle tool again, or the oval tool, click on the fill color, I'll make it yellow, uh, and the stroke color, I'll make that yellow, and I'll put the sun in the top right hand corner of the uh, screen, All right? And now I'll move to the last frame of animation in layer three, and I'm simply going to click on the selection tool, and I'm going to move that sun to the other side of the screen and then click in the middle of that timeline remember in layer 3 right click classic tween it gives that message again just click OK and now when I click play you can see that I have multiple components moving through the animation so if you want you could have moved each um, shape frame by frame by hand but sometimes it's just more simple to use that classic tween option so there we go i have a city um, a man moving from left to right and the sun moving through the sky when you've finished simply click file save as and then choose a place to save your project. And the file format is an Adobe Animate uh, or a .fla file. And this allows you to reopen the project and make changes later on. So I'll just call this uh, City Walk will do. And I'll save it in my documents folder. So just hit save. Um, if you want to choose somewhere else, click on this little down arrow to open the full window and um, you can choose wherever you want to save the animation on your computer. I'll just save it in my documents, so I'll click Save. And there, the project is saved. To save your animation as an animated GIF, click File, Export, Export Animated GIF. In this export image window, you can see that the option of GIF has been selected for you. There are other options, JPEG, PNG, um, but these don't support animation, so we wouldn't select any of those. So you'd simply just leave it as GIF. And now you can click the Save button, and it again will ask you where you'd like to save it. So leave it as City Walk, but now instead of um, FLA, whatever the file extension is for Adobe Animate, you can see it's citywalk.gif because this is a GIF image file. So simply click save and your image will save as an animated GIF. Now to open your um, saved animated GIF, go to the finder on your computer um, go to your documents folder or wherever you happen to have saved your file. And I've got lots of files in here. 
Um, but if I scroll through, I can see I've got citywalk.fla. That's my project file that I can open and animate. And I've got citywalk.gif. Now, if I double click this, it will open up in preview mode on my Mac. And it will just show me a static image that's not moving with the different frames of animation. So if I just click the red dot on that and close that. Instead, if I right click it and then go to open with and open it with a browser. So if I open it with Safari, it will open an internet window and the animated GIF will be um, visible on the, uh, on the screen. So you could send this file to your friends or post it in forums and you've got your animation going there. And that's how you make animated GIFs um, with multiple layers in Adobe Animate. So why don't you um, give this a go and see what kind of animations you can come up with.